Hey folks, how you doing? I uh, just now got the fuel. I'm getting away from Yuma. Of course, to you, it was no time. I made that one video, posted it. Chance made a comment. I uh, made about a half a video to him. Then I finally got on a few items, so I just went ahead and deleted it. So, uh, now let's see if I can get out of here. He had uh, made a comment on uh, the prep and the truck for the winter. Made the comment that he just got his CDLs in October. Be running Canada and the Eastern Shore at that. Ah. And that's my energy drink for the day. Don't mind me, I'm just getting situated before I get mashing that gas and enjoying my California time. Uh, a chance, the best thing I can tell you, because he asked me for more tips, the best thing that you can do as a new driver, and I ain't got a clue what age you are and it don't really matter what matters is uh state border ahead way station ahead I'm trying to remember if I need to turn left on yeah. south avenue yeah, 3 east a z280 and then take the entrance to the left in 0 0.2 miles no we're gonna go through a little bit of that let me just go ahead and mute that thing all right the uh, best advice any new driver can get. But it damn near goes double fold the younger you are. Uh, because a lot of the, you youth don't know how to communicate well. And you come off to us older drivers as being unappreciative, uh, better than thou, and all kinds of stuff. That you have to be very leery of. There are some of us out here that gladly help new drivers, but there are so many of the new drivers that do not appreciate appreciate it and have literally told me to my face, you drive your truck, I'll drive mine. Don't worry about my truck. And I'm like, you got it there, big boy. I'll walk away in a heartbeat. Not saying that you would do that, but that's what we have put up with. So what I'm telling you is, uh, as old saying is, go with your hat in your hand. You know, you ain't got to kiss nobody's ass, but don't disrespect them. But put you together a group of drivers that you know personally or from your company, or if you're hauling regular freight, if you can put together a few experienced drivers that you can fall back on and ask questions. And I've had my share of them in the day. Uh, and some of the better drivers that uh, I know are the ones that were not afraid to ask. They were not afraid to say, I don't know. And that ain't saying that I taught them and they're great. No, they asked several people like me. They put together their little list of people that they could talk to, that they could ask questions of. That's what you need to do. Uh, I can give you a few tidbits and a few little helpful hints, but there ain't nothing like having you a mentor, somebody up there in Canada that's used to running it, and your Canadian driving, your Canadian road conditions are drastically different than down here. So uh, be very careful if you get online and you're soliciting any kind of advice you need to be extremely careful that you know where they're at. Because uh, the way Canada takes care of its roads and its storms is a whole lot different than the way United States does. In my opinion, and I've rode both of them, and 
a lot of your Canadian boys have too, and girls, so I'm not called a sexist. Canada really don't do a whole lot to their roads until after the storm. So you normally have uh, some fresh snow to run on. The uh, American side down here, as soon as it starts thinking about snowing, they're out there with the salt shakers and everything else, and they keep them roads plowed, and they keep a nice firm sheet of ice everywhere. So it's a lot more drastic down here on the slip and sliding part. Now the downside to y'all's part up there, sometimes it's damn hard to tell where the road is. I mean, down there, at least you can see the road that you're sliding off of. Sometimes up there, you're wondering where the road is to slide on to. Uh, but that's something you're a Canadian. you got to learn your own ways up there. Uh, if you know you're getting ready to stop for any length of time, thank you there, truck, for cutting me off. Including an up to overnight. Uh, pump your brakes or ride your brakes a few times because running out there everything's hot under your truck and whatnot you're building up moisture snow gets there melts whatnot you want to pump your brakes or ride your brakes a couple of different times just so that uh, you're drying your brakes out not a big deal down here until these modern day trucks we had an old saying that you never set your brake in the wintertime. Your trailer brakes. You don't set your trailer brakes. Uh, your tractor brakes would normally break themselves loose if your brakes froze up. Your trailer brakes don't. That's why you need a good hammer. That's why you need the alcohol. If you ever forget and set your trailer brakes back there, they, the brake pads will freeze up, freeze up to the hubs. And that's where you're squirting. And when you do the, uh, the alcohol, take your pocket knife or something and put a hole in the top to make a squirt bottle out of it. That way you can squirt the bottle and shoot it up in there. Uh, you squirt that up in there and beat, the, beat around on the brake hub and all uh, on the tire hub and all that stuff to try to bust the tank loose and that is one of the most annoying aggravating things you can ever do uh, another little thing is is when you go back and in if it's fresh snow or in and or it's snowing you uh, when you set your brakes you release them within a minute or two and I call that fanning them. You can fan them as in riding the brake pedal, you know, pushing on the brake pedal off and on. Ooh, I need to write down my mileage right here. 11,696. Hold on a second. And this is Arizona. AZ. 11. On your brake pedal pushing and releasing you can also fan them in my opinion by doing your brakes on and off you know your brake release buttons on your dash your red and yellow but you want to work the brakes a few times to make sure they're dry that they don't freeze up on you the uh, kitty litter that I mentioned earlier that was not a joke carry kitty litter with you a few bags of it, whatever you deem you can carry. That is one of the best things you can use for getting out of a slick spot. If you're just stuck there on the ice, packed snow, you know, you're not off the road type shit. You're just spinning out because you can't get traction. Kitty litter is one of the best things that you can use. And it's not that expensive. So uh, I suggest you keep you some kitty litter with you. Uh, 
broker out there where you're at. Find out what your company wants you to use on your fuel for your fuel additives. Use plenty of, carry plenty of fuel additives and use plenty of fuel additives. Do not trust just what the truck stops put in their fuel. Uh, during the worst of the winters, that's the last thing that I do is trust them. One of my pet peeves, one of my things that I like to do is winter time. I don't let my tanks get below half. Uh, up there where you're at, that some of your fuel stops get kind of stretched out in between. You know what I mean? So, uh, and we and we could only use flying J's. So uh, when we was up there, it was a uh, a little bit of a hassle to be able to hit flying J's and keep fuel in the truck. Now, I know you've got your Huskies and and your Canadian Petrol and all that stuff. So hopefully you can use more than just flying J's. Keep your tanks as full as possible. Try never to go to bed with your tanks below three quarter. Uh, make sure that you've got your uh, saddle blankets on your saddle. Heat, preferably heated if you got them. Skirts if you can get them. Uh, whatever your company will let you get for the rigging on the truck at their expense. That was why I froze up. I assume you watched a few of these and, and you've seen where I was talking about I froze up in Canada. Uh, I did. I had plenty of additives. I did not have no kind of skirts. I didn't have no kind of blankets. None of that stuff. My fuel tanks were just wide open. One of the dumbest things a company, uh, a company has ever made me do, but they did it. I should have said no, but I was still a rookie to Canada. Excuses, excuses, it don't matter, it happened. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Talk to some of your Canadian drivers up there. If you've been driving since October, you've gotten to know a few drivers. Pick their brains and listen to them. Don't play the know-it-all. If you ask them about winter driving and they're going to tell you, shut up. Don't be one of them stand there and say, I know, I know, I know. Very annoying, very annoying. Just shut up and listen to what they've got to say. Uh, don't drive beyond your comfort. That's the biggest one. If it's getting bad up there and you're not comfortable, you're getting scared, you're not doing nobody any good by staying out there. You are now a hazard to yourself and to the public. Don't drive beyond your means. You know, if it's getting nasty and you're you're getting scared, don't be so proud that you're gonna force yourself to do it and be the he-man. No, live through it to be alive for another day. Find a way to get off the road, you know. Uh, your biggest thing, man, is to get you a support team of old drivers like myself that have a half a clue. You want to get your Canadian drivers. Do not rely on no American drivers because the majority of these drivers have not been up there in your situation and you are driving in a totally different situation. Hey man, good luck to you. Uh, congratulations on getting your CDL. I hope you do have a good career. There's a lot of stuff different between Canada and the U.S. We have a lot the same, but there's a lot different and uh, y'all got a pretty good system up there. Just trust it. Work with your old people. Listen to them. Learn from us old burnout parts. Hey, remember, God loves Canadians too. You have a blessed evening. I love y'all too, man. I really do. Have a good day. Bye.